Hello and welcome. This video demonstrates the administrative experience of IBM MQ. This video is actually part of some reliability and failover testing that we've completed, but felt that there was value in putting together a video introduction of the IBM MQ administrative and management environment. Now, to provide a very brief overview, this is the architecture that was used for the reliability and failover testing that we did. The important point to note here is that there are four active queue managers, each with a corresponding standby. This is simply to provide some clarity for the rest of the video where we will be working with the different queue managers. So we've already gone ahead and installed IBM Q on all four servers here, which is a very straightforward process, but this way we can move straight on to the creation of the queue managers. Instead of requiring a configuration file for each queue manager, they're actually defined dynamically, which allows us to make some changes without having to restart the queue manager. Uh, the first method that I actually want to cover here is defining the queue managers through the command line interface. To speed up the process, I've actually put together some commands laid out in a text file so that I can just do some copy paste. So the first thing that we need to create is the queue manager specifying the data path, which in our case is on an NSF4 shared folder to support failover. And we're also specifying the log path. And then once that's completed, we need to actually start the queue manager. And now that that's up and running, we can start the uh, MQ script command prompt for MQ1. And in here, we will define a listener and start up that listener. Now, MQ1 is actually going to hold the full repository information for the cluster. And so we will define that. And we will also define the sender channel and receiver channels for the other queue managers that we'll be creating in the video. And one more. And now that those definitions are complete, we can close the MQSC prompt. So for sake of time, I'm actually going to pause the video and repeat the process for queue managers two, three, and four. Now, I did come back a little early for queue manager four instead of doing it while the video was paused because I wanted to point out that instead of using the MQSC prompt like we did for Queue Manager 1, we can actually pipe commands into MQSC, which brings me to the point that everything in IBM MQ can be completed through the command prompt, which means that all of these commands that we're using here can be scripted, um, which you may have already noticed that the commands that I'm copying and pasting are in fact from a shell script that we used for testing purposes to make the process much, much quicker. Now that all four active queue managers are defined and running, uh, we need to make them multi-instance, which means the creation of a corresponding standby queue manager for failover purposes. And how we do that is by displaying the MQ info with the command switch, which provides us with the command that we need to copy and paste in our case to server four. And once we start up that queue manager, we will see that it comes up in standby mode. And once again for time, we'll simply pause the video and repeat this process for the other three queue managers. And now we have all eight queue managers up and running with four active and four standby. But before we move on, I did mention that everything can be done through the command line. And I just wanted to take a moment to just show you how that looks. So if we start up the MQSC prompt for queue manager one, we can, for example, display the queue manager details. We can display the status of the queue manager. And we can display the details for the cluster. Uh, 
for Q managers four, three, two, and one. So that should provide enough of an example for interacting with the command line interface. But for those that are not using scripting or workload scheduling solutions, it's likely that the majority of your interaction would preferably be through a graphical user interface. And for that, IBM provides its MQ Explorer. Now, just like the command line interface, virtually everything can be completed through MQ Explorer. So it's not a case like some other messaging products where administration and management functionality is divided between the command line and a graphical user interface, which essentially forces you to have to use both of them to manage your environment. In this case, you can do everything through the command line, or you can do everything through the graphical user interface, or you can mix and match and use whichever interface is best suited for the task. Now, just to poke around a little bit in MQ Explorer, let's go ahead and make a queue. And as you can see, there are a number of options that are available uh, for the queue, uh, which queue manager you want, if it's part of a cluster, if it will provide persistent messaging and we can also open up the queue and send a quick test message and if we refresh we can open it up and we can actually see the message in the queue and let's go ahead and create a topic and we'll say Ports. And again, you can see that there are a lot of options here. And for this topic, we can go ahead and create a subscriber. Taking a look at some of the other details here, if we look at the channels, we can see the channels that we defined earlier through the command line interface, and same with the listener. As you can see, I mean, overall, you've got a lot of access to information uh, here, and now we only started MQ Explorer for a single server, and while we haven't done it here, you can define the authentication information for the other servers as well, which will allow centralized management of the entire MQ environment through a single MQ Explorer window. In closing, we wanted to leave you with a high-level summary of the types of administrative and monitoring functions that can be performed through the various interfaces. As we've already mentioned, virtually every action in IBM MQ can be completed through multiple means, allowing users to select the one that they're most comfortable with. And again, support for scripting allows for a number of processes to be automated. As a final note, while adding and editing queue managers, whether through the command line interface or the graphical user interface, automatically makes changes to the corresponding configuration files. In Windows and Linux, there is no reason to manually edit the configuration files. That being said, however, you can back up the files before making changes so that you can easily revert to the backups to undo any modifications if necessary. So that concludes our demonstration of the IBM MQ administrative experience. We hope that it did provide you with some valuable pieces of information, and we wanted to thank you for watching.